أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد Continuing on in our study of Aqidah Tawasatiyah by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon all the ulama of Islam the ulama of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah those who called to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and guide the people to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam so we left off in the treaties after explaining a very brief meaning of Ayat al-Kursi and Surat al-Ikhlas which affirmed for us the principle of Nafi wal ithbat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many of the verses he the verses mention a Nafi wal ithbat a Nafi meaning negation and ithbat meaning an affirmation so a Nafi negating shirk and resemblance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any form tashbih and negating those other ways in which Ahlul Bid'ah misconstrues the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in addition to that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same verses establishes the affirmation he affirms or makes ithbat of his tawheed and ithbat and affirms his divine attributes and characteristics subhanahu wa ta'ala qala shaykh al-islam ibn taymiyyah he mentioned he began to in this stage of the treaties he begins with the mufassal or the details about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes from the Quran. He begins in the first section of his treatise after the introduction which was gave uh, a, a, a general meaning of what the treatise was and, and the aqeed of Ahl Sunnah with regards to the pillars of Iman. And now the Shaykh rahimahullah ta'ala moved into the uh, the details regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but he begins with the Quran first which is the first masdar uh, of Islam is the Quran and, and the sun, and then the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Qala Shaykh al-Islam wa qawluhu subhanahu So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the Almighty huwa awalu wal akhiru wa zahiru wal batin وَهُوَ بِكُلِ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٌ وَقَوْلُهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَوَقَّلُ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتُ وَقَوْلُهُ وَهُوَ عَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ وَقَوْلُهُ وَهُوَ الْحَكِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ In those verses, in the first verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hadid, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says هُوَ أَوَلُ وَالْآخِرُ وَالْظَاهِرُ وَالْبَاطُمُ هُوَ بِكُلِ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٌ he says, He is the first and the last and the most high and the most near and He is the all-knower of everything. And then in the second verse where Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَوَقُّلْ عَلَى الْحَيَّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتُ Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and put your trust in the ever-living one who do, does not die. And in the third verse, third verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Huwa alimul hakim. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, He is the all-knower, the all-wise. So these are all characteristics, attributes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about himself and then in the final verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَهُوَ الْحَكِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ The all-wise, the all-aware. So that affirms for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those divine characteristics and sifat of knowledge, ilm, of being the most knowledgeable. 
the or the 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 all aware, the all knowledgeable, the most knowledgeable, the all wise. Um, Allah subhanahu wa taala affirms for himself that he is the first. Nothing is before him. The last, nothing is after him. And the most high, nothing is above him. And the most near, nothing is nearer than him. And the knower of everything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms all of those divine names and characteristics of himself subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. So for as believers, we believe in that and we affirm those characteristics. Uh, going to some of the explanations with regards to those divine names, uh, Shaykh Al Haras, Rahimahullah Taala, he says, the statement of Allah, He is the first and the last, the most high and the most near, and He is all knower of everything, is for the recognition of both the sides. This verse shows that all of these four names are specific for the exalted Allah. And their meanings are particularized for him on account of his grace and grandeur. Also, regarding that verse, the Shaykh explained that the, the scholars have some difference with some, uh, some ikhtilaf on some of the meanings of those names. And he mentions that the most correct and the strongest evidence comes from a nas surih, from the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala ta anhu who said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said made a supplication O Allah the Lord of all the seven heavens and the Lord of the earth and the Lord of everything the splitter of the seed and the seed stones revealer of the Torah the and the Injil, or the Gospels, and the Quran. I seek your refuge from the mischief of every mischievous being. For you are the first, there is none before you. You are the last, there is none after you. You are the most high, nothing is over you. You are the most near, there is nothing nearer than you. Repay my debts and save me from my wants. So that hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is in Sahih Muslim that offers us the tafsir of that ayah that gives us the tafsir of that ayah, that explanation of those attributes and that for us as Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah we must take that into our creed we must learn as Muslims in general to come back and establish our minhaj based on the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam and the Salaf al-Salih. Meaning, first and foremost, as we mentioned on countless occasions, the Sahaba, they're the Asl of the Jama'ah. Radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. That's the minhaj of Ahl sunnah Ahl sunnah if they want to understand something, they want to, to understand the divine names and attributes of Allah. They go back to the Qur'an. They go back to the Sunnah. Here we have an explanation from the Sunnah of what those attributes mean. And they go back to the faham of, of the Salaf al-Salih. So here the Prophet وسلم, lets us know in the second part of that beautiful dua, that beautiful supplication, the Prophet وسلم, said, you, uh, you are the first. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls himself, he says, huwa awlu wal akhru. He's the first and the last. So the Prophet ﷺ in this hadith, he says, You are the first. And here's our tafsir. Here's our explanation. There is nothing earlier than you. There's nothing that precedes you. There's nothing that comes before you. You are the last. There is nothing after you. You are the most high. There is nothing over you. Why can't the Asha'ira accept this? Why can't the Mu'tazila accept this? Why can't Ahl Bid'ah accept this? This is the Minhaj al-Nabuwa. Uh, 
the minhaj of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Let's go to the, the to the fahm of the Salaf al-Salih radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in on how to understand these sifat. These sifat are are clear from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the uh, the ulama rabbaniyun those great scholars who began teaching the people with the small issues and then they built them up in knowledge to teach them to have a tarbiyah. Tarbiyah it comes from the same word. That they, the ulama, those great, the great scholars, when you talk about ulama al-Rabbaniyun, as Allah mentions them in the Quran, those are the ones, as Ibn, uh, Ibn Abbas says, that they begin the people, they teach the people the small issues and build them to the to the big issues. Unfortunately, what we have in this day and age, many people who take the opposite minhaj of the Rabbaniyun. Instead, they begin the people with the major issues before the minor issues. Instead of beginning them with Tawheed and stuff, the Du'ata Takfir, they begin the people with talking about the government. Instead of trying to get those people up to pray Fajr, those people are busy talking about King so-and-so, President so-and-so, this one here and this one here and how they're disbelievers. Then we have another group, they're busy in the people with politics. How can we make, establish a new Islamic uh, parliament? How can we establish a new Islamic Congress to have more uh, rights and economic uh, freedoms and more uh, freedom of speech and this and that and the other? But instead of beginning the people with the minor issues first, how to practice their deen, like the Rabbaniyun, then build the people up to the bigger issues. Some of the people, they busy the people how to take people off the sunnah. This one's a mubtidr. This one's this. And you need to know this before you can read Surah Al-Fatiha. And this is true. This is a shameful, shameful minhaj that some of the people have developed and fallen into. And we've heard it countless times. Of how many people have we heard they're talking about issues supposedly of Jarwa Ta'adil and Nakhla Mukhalif. They're talking about how to criticize the, the, the principles of criticizing and praising individuals, which these are complex principles that takes an in, in-depth study to be someone who's an ulama of that or even a student of knowledge of that. It's not just reading one metan and studying one metan and then you're going to make these uh, rulings and judgments about people. That takes study and takes ilm of fiqh. Fiqh fi deen. Man yiradullahu bi khayran fi yafaqahu fi deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the deen. So to busy people, new Muslims, the person takes their shahada, but you're telling them, don't go to this masjid, that so-and-so is this. Now, if that masjid is a threat, of course. If the masjid is a, a masjid of Ahl Bidah. But what I'm talking about is those people, about those very... Uh, Every time they see a person make a mistake, they call them an innovator. Every time they fall into an issue, they call them an innovator. And those people might be on the same minhaj as them. But yet they don't sit, they're not down with their crew. They're not down with their jama'ah. They don't come to their gatherings. They don't go to the restaurants and have coffee with them. They don't see them in the same lecture as their friends, as with Sheikh so-and-so, or student of knowledge so-and-so. وَعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ That is uh, misguiding the people. And that is the opposite of the ulama al-Rabbaniyun. And you'll see this in this time and age of those great scholars. They don't busy the people with that. They teach the people those things they need to get them to Jannah. So again, going back to these important issues, is that we have to realize that the minhaj of the Prophet وسلم, is the best minhaj. And the minhaj of the Salaf al Salih is the minhaj of the Prophet. And how did they understand those divine names and attributes? They understood them and they accepted them on the Zahir, on what their apparent meaning and what the Prophet وسلم, left us with from tafsir, of going back to the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, to describe what does it mean when Allah says, he, Hu awalu. Just from the Arabic language, we know it means the first, but we don't, you know, from our aql, if we use our aql, one person's going to have a different meaning than the next. If we use our intellect, this person's going to understand it different than the next. But then if we go back to the sunnah, 
of the Prophet wasallam then we, we have an understanding of what that means. The Prophet ﷺ came with the tafsil. He said, Anta. He said, you are the first. There is nothing earlier than you, or nothing before you. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Beautiful uh, gives us the insight and gives us the meanings of those verses. I, I want to bring a couple of quick principles, a couple of quick uh, statements from Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan regarding this. Before we go to the masjid, bi idnillah ta'ala, and Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan said, Rahimah uh, Hafizullah ta'ala, he said, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about himself in the verse, he brought uh, uh, this, he brought a, he mentioned the meaning of those those divine names and attributes which come from the hadith we mentioned in Sahih Muslim for example of Zahir wa Batan of Zahir meaning uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is wa, wa Batan that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala When he says Subhanahu wa Taala that he is a zahir wa batin wa huwa bi kulli shayin alim, that it means a zahir that he is the most high. And al batin we understand from the hadith is how we understand this that he is the closest. Uh, he is the closest, the nearest to his creatures. That doesn't mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we say like those people who try to put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the creation or, or, or as one with the creation. But rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is closest to us in his knowledge, in his hearing, in his sight, and knowing us better than we know ourselves, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this, uh, at this, a uh, verse gives us, lets us know the alu of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, that He subhana is above all of His creation. Shaykh Salah bin Fusayn says, وَشَاهِدْ مِنَ الْآيَاتِ الْكَرِيمِ إِثْبَاتْ هَذِهِ الْأَسْمَاءِ الْكَرِيمَةِ لِلَّهِ الْمُقْتَدِيَةُ لِإِحَاطَتِهِ بِكُلِ شَيْءٍ زمانا ومكانا واطلاعا وتقديرا وتدبيرا تعالى وتقدس علوا كبيرا. The Shaykh said, حفظ الله تعالى, he said these verses, the, the point here is that these, this verse, especially the first verse, we're, we're talking about the verse where Allah تبارك وتعالى says in Surah Al Hadid, هو أول وآخر وظاهر وباطن. So he says that this verse, the point of this verse is it affirms for us and the and the, the way Sheikh Al Islam is using this as a dilla, it, it affirms and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these divine characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they include his encompassing his creation with his knowledge and his 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 closeness and his his hearing and his seeing everything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that he is ever aware of all things. And he is above his creation. And the Shaykh mentioned about the second ayat. He said, related to this, this verse, that this also affirms Hayat al Kamila lillahi subhana wa nafi al maut anhu fa fiha a gem bena nafi wal ithbat. So he mentions in the second verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabihi al-kareem wa tawakkal ala al-hayy wa tawakkal ala al-hayy la yamut and put your trust in the ever living who does not die in this verse it as Sheikh Salah bin Fuzan says it affirms Hayat kamila lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It affirms that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ever living. That He is perfect life. And His life, He's the ever living. That there is no comparison between Him and His creation. As we live, but we die. 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms for himself that he is al hay And then he says, he, in the, he, he explains, goes on further in the same verse to explain al-ladhi, al hay al la yumut, the ever-living that does not die. So that lets us know that that is perfect life. That is complete life that only Allah, the Almighty, possesses, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does not die, but He is the life giver, and He is the one that causes us to die, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that verse affirms for us the, uh, the, that characteristic, that divine characteristic of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it negates, so again, nafi, it began here with isbat and then nafi. So affirming and then negating. Affirming uh, the divine characteristic of being the ever living and negating that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dies, which is something His creation does. So that shows us. And, and this is a, a very important lesson for us because how is it the, that people could go to worshiping, worshiping either inanimate objects or someone who lives and dies? Someone who lives and then they die. That shows the nuks of their characteristic of life. That they have life, but their life is plagued with sickness. Their life is plagued with trials and tribulation and sorrow, pain and happiness and joy, hopefully, and, and the other positive characteristics. But it's not complete and it's not perfect. And it will end. It's limited. They will die. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself affirms for himself that he is the ever-living who does not die. The perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, that ayat, it, it, the, both those verses, they contain, they contain uh, affirmation and negation. And then the final verse, Sheikh Salim bin Fozan mentions, he said, the, the, and the, the point here is that also that this verse and the verse he's talking about here where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he is the all wise, the all aware that in this verse it affirms those two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is Al-Hakim and he is Al-Khabir so it affirms those two names and that includes those two characteristics that are divine characteristics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise and he is the all aware he is aware of all things and that is the shahid of those verses and in the next uh, lesson we'll go on to the next verse and we'll try to be a little quicker because the sheikh sheikh al-islam ibn taymiyyah in the following uh lessons he just gives us uh he he wants to illustrate those those uh uh, principles, the principles of, of Nafi wal Ithbat, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates that he has any shortcomings and he affirms his perfection and his divine names and attributes. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.